Hey guys, it's me again. I'm doing my second video blog. It is 10.51 p.m. on a Friday night, and here I am. This room may or may not look familiar. This is my parents' house. I came home for Passover Seder, and this is the bedroom that I didn't really grow up in, but I lived in from eighth grade through, I guess, my sophomore year of college. I guess since I moved out, my room became a storage area for some things, like that thing. So I was trying to think of a good topic for this video blog, and the other day I was doing laundry. I was going through some of my jackets and stuff, and I found this pin. I don't know if you can see it, if it's blurry or not, but this is a rocket. This is an Atlas V, and I pinned it on a jacket um, during the OA6 launch back in March, and I wore that jacket out like two or three weeks ago, <laughs> and I guess this pin was still on it, and that was in like a social setting, like not a space nerd setting, but um, didn't realize it until their day. So I think that this is a good opportunity to talk about the Atlas V rocket since I didn't do a video blog before or after the OA6 launch. And I think I'm going to put this pin back on this jacket now because it's really freaking cool. Rockets are cool. Okay, so OA6. OA6 was the sixth commercial resupply mission for Orbital ATK. They flew their Cygnus resupply craft off an Atlas V rocket on March 22nd. I was there for that launch. It was awesome. I was also there to photograph Cygnus inside the clean room, which was really cool too. Um, it's really neat when NASA and Orbital ATK and United Launch Alliance, which is the launch provider, they own the Atlas V rocket. Um, it's really cool when they let us get up close and personal with the missions. It kind of, you kind of become a part of it. I kind of have a weak spot for this rocket because the first rocket launch I ever saw was an Atlas V. It was November of 2013, and it was the Maven mission. And that was kind of what, you know, ignited my passion for space. Love it. Oh my god. Is it cool or what? She's second now. Oh my god. <laughs> I saw that launch and I just knew that this was something that I really wanted to be a part of. And one blog in the future I will dive into how I got to where I am now and how I got started, but Right now, let's just focus on this really cool rocket. Okay, so Atlas comes in two different series. There's the 400 and the 500. There's also a three-digit designator that tells you the configuration of the rocket. So the first number tells you the um, diameter of the payload fairing, which is either four or five meters. The second number um, is the number of solid rocket boosters, or SRBs, attached to the rocket. And the third number is the number of RL-10 engines in the Centaur second stage. So you have the first stage, which I call the booster, just the booster. Then you have the second stage, which is the Centaur, and then on top of the Centaur you have that fairing, which holds the payload. 
the last Atlas launch I saw was OA6 back in March, which was launching Cygnus, a cargo resupply spacecraft, to the International Space Station. A few weeks before the launch, I saw Cygnus inside the clean room at NASA Kennedy, and I got the opportunity to photograph it. Cygnus kind of looks like a giant keg, so I call it a space keg. So you probably can't hear me, you probably can't really see me, but this is Cygnus. This is the OA-6 spacecraft, named after the lead astronaut Rick Husband, it is the SS Rick Husband. So Cygnus was the payload being launched off Atlas. This Atlas was in the 401 configuration, so it's a 4 meter diameter, no solid rocket boosters, and one RL-10 engine in the Centaur second stage. The launch was a night launch. It was absolutely beautiful. I watched it from Cocoa Beach and I took a long exposure which came out really nice. I don't know if any of you have seen it yet, but it is um, on my website. If you go to my blogs and you go to the OA61, you'll find it there. You can't miss it. It's like obvious. Um, the launch was flawless, or so I thought. After the launch happened, it turns out that there was a problem with the rocket and the Centaur second stage ended up burning six seconds longer than it was supposed to. Why did it do that? Because it was compensating for the RD-180 engine in the rocket booster that shut down six seconds early. And just to reiterate, when I say booster, I'm not talking about SRBs, I'm talking about the first stage of the rocket. The RD-180 engine in the Atlas V booster is Russian built and the United Launch Alliance, the launch provider, is working towards phasing those out. They're actually teaming up with Blue Origin and using BE-4 engines in their future rocket, which is the um, Vulcan rocket, which is something I'll cover in another blog. But the Vulcan rocket, once it's available, will um, replace their Delta rockets and eventually replace their Atlas rocket and that'll probably be some time in the 2020s. United Launch Alliance has 106 launches, successful launches, under their belt and even though this anomaly didn't really screw things up, it could have cost the entire mission and that's pretty scary. So until ULA figures out exactly what went wrong with the Atlas V rocket that day, they have announced that their next launch, which is the Muos 5 launch, supposed to be May 5th, um, they have delayed that indefinitely until they figure out the root cause of the problem. I can respect that. Um, it's very important that they figure out what went wrong because these launches are very important. They're dealing with very expensive payloads, not to mention the Atlas V rocket will be the rocket that our astronauts will ride upon to the ISS once commercial crew starts off on Florida's space coast. Luckily, OA-6 was just cargo and not human beings. Just because ULA delayed their next Atlas launch does not mean that rockets will not be launching from the Space Coast. They most certainly will be. We still have SpaceX with their Falcon 9. ULA still has their Delta rocket and there's a Delta IV Heavy expected to launch sometime this summer. And word on the street is that Orbital ATK will be using High Bay 2 of the Vehicle Assembly Building to more than likely build a new rocket. I also want to take this time to thank all my friends and family and followers for your concerns and kind words during the last week. Um, Juno is healing, she's happy, I'm so happy, um, I can't feel on this tip of this finger still, 
I think I damaged your nerve, but it's okay. I will survive. It really means a lot to me that so many of you reached out. And it feels really good to know that there are people out there who care, especially if I've never met you before. I think that's really amazing. Um, social media and the internet is incredible when it comes to connecting with people across the world. Thank you for braving another video blog. I will try to be doing these weekly on a variety of topics because I do a lot more than just space. Um, if you have any comments, questions, or even topics you want me to explore, please feel free to leave me a comment or reach out and let me know. This concludes my video blog. Um, my Friday night was probably more wild than yours, just kidding. Before I was filming this, I was out front of my parents' house taking pictures of the beautiful full moon. So once I'm done with this, I'm going to edit that picture and throw it up online. Be on the lookout for a full moon pic. Also be on the lookout for my third video blog. I hope to have that up sometime next week. Um, happy Passover to my Jewish friends. And I hope you all have a fantastic weekend. Right, Juno? She's already passed out. <laughs> Bye!